What's going on coders and welcome to episode 1 of our lock service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be exploring the different types of locks. So in the past there was just one general purpose lock to cover all of your use cases. However, somewhat recently Google Apps Script has expanded that now into three separate locks. And you can see them here, it's the document lock, the script lock, and the user lock. So I have created this diagram, hopefully it'll be helpful for you to kind of grasp it more intuitively. But when you're asking which lock should I use, always ask yourself the follow-up question, where do I want to put the lock onto? So let's start at the document lock on the far left. So the lock goes on the document itself. So what this means is that uh, there can be many users that are accessing a document. That's totally cool. Everything is normal. However, if that document needs to access a certain section of code in, say, a bounded script, say, then it can only execute that code uh, one time. There are no parallel concurrent processes going on at the same time. It's just one execution of that code at a time per document. Now, if there are multiple documents accessing that code, say you have written a, uh, a section of code and then there's one spreadsheet that uses it and then maybe a document that uses it for some reason, I'm not really sure, then those separate documents can each have their own execution. However, if they try to execute multiple um, threads, say if they try to have multiple executions on the document itself, it will only go one at a time. So this is, this is especially important for like triggers. If you have an unopened trigger, only one unopened uh, or that function will only be called once at a time. All right, let's move on to the script lock. So the script lock is the most secure of all the locks. And honestly, this is probably the one that I use the most. And what this says is we are putting the lock on the script itself. So it's only going to execute this section of code, whatever section you specify, whatever section you put the lock around, one at a time. It doesn't mean, it doesn't matter who the user is, it doesn't matter which document is accessing it, it doesn't matter which web app or whatever, we are only going to execute this section of code uh, at, at one at a time, single file line. So again, if you have three users, see uh, on the document, you have three users, and one user, or they try to all access it at the same time, whatever user gets there first gets to execute it first, and then the other two users have to wait until that lock has been released to execute the code. All right, and then the last one is the user lock, and this is where the lock goes on the user themselves. So what this means is that it's totally cool if you have 20 users or however many users you want, accessing the same section of code, they'll all run it concurrently. However, if a single user tries to execute a certain section of code, they can do that, but then if they try to execute it simult again simultaneously while the first execution is running, they will be blocked from doing that. So they can only run a section of code once at a time. They can't have multiple executions of that code going on uh, concurrently. All right, guys, I hope this was a little bit helpful, but I think that it'll make a little bit more sense as we progress through the playlist. Anyways, let's look at our top three methods for the day, and they are git document lock, git script lock, and finally, git user lock. So let's jump in the code and see these three methods, what they look like, and just get a high-level overview of them. The intention of this video is to be a little bit more conceptual and less technical, but there are just a few things I want to cover in the IDE uh, just so that it could be a little bit more clear and you can get just a little bit more intuition. So again, to access the methods, we need to access the lock service. And then if we hit the period button, here are our three methods that we were talking about. So you can see that there are three separate locks. However, they all return an instance of lock. So again, this lock is is the same. This script, this lock, which is returned from git script lock, is the same lock that is returned from git user lock. Uh, they, they, it's the same object basically, and it returns the same these four methods. So that's really nice. Um, however, you are call you, you're calling them in different contexts. So just to show that, let me logger log the three separate locks. So if I log the script lock first, and then let me just copy that, paste it, 
paste it a third time, and then I will get these other locks. Again, these are these are different locks, but they return an instance. They return an instance of the lock object, um, which is going to have access to the same methods. So anyways, let's save this and let's just run it once. Great, so we ran it and if we check out our logs, and I'll give it a little bit of time because I know the logs can be somewhat finicky. And there we go, it is showing that is finicky. There's only one lock displaying, there should be three. Let's go to our stack driver logging. Sometimes it does this, but usually the stack driver logging has an accurate representation. All right, so here we go. So it says lock, null, lock. So let's go back into our code. So we, so the first log was again a lock, the next log was a null, and then the last log was a lock. So we can see that we got the lock for the script and the user. However, for get document lock, it returned null. And why is that? It's because for the get document lock, you have to call it within the context of the document um, parent object or the, the parent container, right? So you need to call get document lock actually from a bounded script. Otherwise, it's not really going to make sense, right? This is a standalone script. And when you say get document lock, it doesn't really know which document you're talking about. So anyways, let's go into a document like a spreadsheet. This is a container. And here is the bounded script for this container. And now if we run our logger log dot get document lock, let's save it and we'll run it. Great, it just ran. So now let's view the logs. And it's waiting. Hopefully we don't have to access the stack driver, but we may have to. And here we go. So we have the lock right here. So again, before it was a null, but now we have actually the lock because we are calling this get document lock from the context of a spreadsheet or from a container document. So guys, we're going to go look at each of these, these four methods in the next episode, and it's going to make a lot more sense. Um, but I just wanted to cover that there are indeed three types of locks that you could use in different use cases. And again, I usually use the script, the script lock and the use and the user lock uh, most frequently, but there is also a git document lock if you are in need of that option. Alright guys, I hope you liked this and learned something from this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll be waiting for you in the very next episode.